back to Let's Talk and Peggy. We're here with the Let's Talk team. We got Elisa High, Susan Mills, and joining us at the table is Stephen Wood. Hi. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi, Stephen Thanks does applied. We're glad to have you. Stephen does applied behavior analysis therapy for children. Uh, who are on the autism spectrum. And Susan brought him to us because she is so very active in this community. And we're going to show a little video of you actually doing a quick little therapy session with Alex, our uh, one of our favorite little guys. Check it out. Say cereal. Cereal. Good. Say mommy. Mommy. Say bed. Bed. Say shirt. Shirt. Say potty. Potty. Say bubbles. Bubbles. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I know. It made me want to say it as we, you know, know. we're kind of saying these things. So uh, tell us what we just saw there very quickly. Um, sure. So uh, as you mentioned, my name is Stephen Wood. I'm a board certified behavior analyst and licensed behavior analyst here in Kentucky. And I, I work with an organization, Cultivate Behavior Health and Education, and we operate. Uh, we have seven clinics here um, in Kentucky, uh, Lexington, Louisville, Hebron, Bowling Green, and, and a couple others. Um, in the video you just saw, that was uh, me working with a, a little guy uh, who had a diagnosis of autism spectrum. Um, he was approximately three years old in the video and um, participated in a comprehensive, intensive um, early intervention program. So um, essentially what, what we try to do is get these kids early and get them involved in um, intensive early intervention. Mm -hmm. um, Alex in the video received approximately 35 hours a week of ABA therapy. Uh, probably for about two years prior wow. to graduating yeah. from our program. Um, and it's my understanding he's, you know, in the public school setting now and, and doing quite well. He is doing yeah. very yeah. well. I do. That, that's my baby. Yeah. That's my nugget right yeah. there. Well, we might, we might fight. For, for whose baby that is. Oh. Uh, I would say he was, he was my baby, but um, yeah. Yeah. We, we can share him. He, he was a, a real angel. Aww. So with this being Autism Acceptance Month, there's so much that people do not understand about autism spectrum disorder. So just tell us very briefly, what is autism spectrum disorder? Sure, so um, autism is a neurodevelopmental disability. It's typically diagnosed um, between the ages of two and three. Um, you have, um, you know, in Kentucky, we have some real um, access to diagnosis issues um, where you have children who aren't able to access a diagnosis between two and three, you know, kids that mm. are getting diagnoses, uh, you know, at five and six and eight years old. Um, there are, um, there's really kind of a disproportionate number of children of, of minorities that really um, access uh, diagnostics and treatment later in life, mm -hmm. which is a real issue. Um, autism is an uh, impairment in language acquisition. It uh, presents with impairments in social interaction. And then uh, generally you might have an individual engage in a repetitive or self-stimulatory or restrictive patterns of behavior. Um, so really our goal is to provide an enriched reinforcing environment for kids mm -hmm. where kids are really motivated mm -hmm. to participate in an instructional session. And then we really target anything from you know, language deficits to activities of daily living to self-help skills, um, pre-academic skills, and, and really with the goal of getting kids ready for school so that kids can uh, go into yeah. a school setting mm -hmm. and, and function with the typical types of uh, special education supports. Mm -hmm. So what are, I've been around in the autism community for so 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 long now, and I, I hear so many misconceptions about mm -hmm. autism. What are some of those, um, and maybe why do they even exist? Um, I think if, you know, they, they say if you've met one child with autism, you've met one child with autism. And mm. so, you know, every, every child is different and every child on the spectrum is different. And so you might have individuals who um, are, are so impacted by autism that they um, never develop a vocal language or communication. Um, you might have an individual uh, who requires much less support with, with autism. We, we, in the past referred to those folks as you know high functioning or low functioning we yeah. typically kind of discuss that in terms of like the amount of support that an individual mm -hmm. receives and so um, you you likely had um, you know teachers and, and educators in college who mm -hmm. were potentially on on the autism spectrum um, there's been a lot of attention given to uh, those individuals who require much less support mm -hmm. so uh -huh. there there's a lot of you know TikTok videos and reels where um, I think that, you know, clearly there's a goal of, you know, acceptance for, for and awareness for, for individuals with autism. But mm -hmm. it, it, because it's a spectrum disorder, you, you know, kids present very, very differently. Yeah, so, they do. Um, mm -hmm. 
that presents a real challenge, which is why it's so important that uh, interventions are individualized for each mm -hmm. kid. So we only have about one minute left. Um, what resources might you kind of recommend for children and families who are um, either recently just got a diagnosis or who maybe want to get a little more help? Sure. So um, we, we spoke prior to the segment and, and really had to limit myself to providing, you know, one resource. Yeah. And, so and we've got that. We'll pop it up on One of the, the things I wanted to note, the Autism Society of America and the Autism Society of the Bluegrass, they are at uh, www.autismsociety.org and they really provide a variety of resources for families. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention briefly, I had an opportunity to, to, to check out some of your other segments prior mm -hmm. to, to today's uh, recording and one of the things you talked about was how where you live can really influence the mm -hmm. type of services and supports you receive and and not only does where you live influence that but you know your socioeconomic status mm -hmm. and your employment and you know the type of you know commercial insurance or Medicaid uh, that you might have and, and really here in Kentucky we've got a real uh, problem our uh, reimbursement rates uh, for Medicaid um, are some of the lowest in the country mm -hmm. and so that creates really limited access to care mm -hmm. for families and so I think that's one of the things I want to make sure to, to share is that you know in, in Kentucky we do have some initiatives to increase uh, Medicaid reimbursement rates and mm -hmm. so um, if I might, um, families who are not able to access care who might have Medicaid, they can call 1-800-372-7181 and they'll, that phone call will be answered by a live person and our goal is that uh, parents and uh, you know those who love individuals with autism or autistic people that they could um, advocate for an increase in Medicaid reimbursement rates. Wonderful. Um, there's a lot of uh, children and families that yeah. are sitting on wait lists for yes. diagnosis yep. and even more importantly sitting on wait lists for treatment and mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. that's you know, That's a good point. Uh, it's important to, to raise awareness for families. Yeah, Absolutely. Stephen, thank you so much for Absolutely. joining us Thanks and for, for sharing me. this information. Really, really it's good, and we hope that it's turned a light bulb on for some people mm -hmm. and, and maybe uh, maybe gotten rid of some misconceptions for others, so we really appreciate okay. it. Okay, Thanks for having okay. me. Yeah, so glad you're here. Okay, everybody, stay with us. Coming up after the break, we'll highlight our woman worth talking about.